My name is Akiva Goldman. I'm the director and founder of Goldman & Associates. Our firm has a primary focus on family law issues here in Michigan. Please subscribe to our channel. Custody battles are something that really occupy a lot of time in the courthouse. Um, they really occupy a very significant uh, part of the court's docket. So the question then becomes, when you're having a custody battle, can certain things be used against you? And what would those things be? Well, you have to remember one thing. The court is not so much going to look at you versus the other person so much as it looks at what is in the best interest of the minor child. Now with respect to that, it's almost impossible for the court to separate that out from analyzing the kind of environment you propose to bring the child into. Which means, if you're a drug addict and an alcoholic, the court is going to look at that and hold that against you. Not because you have a problem so much as it, whether or not uh, you know that's a suitable custodial environment for a child. So if you're wondering, well, gee, I, I have life, I do certain things, what can be used against me? For example, will the court hold it against you that you smoke cigarettes? Well, I have to tell you, I've seen some courts uh, take a very strong position on secondhand smoke. Forget about marijuana or other re recreational drugs. Those are the kinds of things where the court takes a very conservative approach toward. Even if you say I have, for example, a, a medical marijuana card and I need it for medicinal purposes, the court will tell you that's fine. Don't expose your kid to it. Your kid doesn't need it for medicinal purposes. And I've seen many times that the other side will come into court and bring a Ziploc bag of clothing that the kid has and the court will open up the bag and you can smell the marijuana smell in the whole court. That's because that child has been exposed to some level of secondhand marijuana smoke. So will the court hold that against you? It is likely that the court will not so much hold it against you but find that that's not an appropriate environment for a child and therefore the court might side with the other person. In effect, therefore, it will count against you. So you got to be very, very careful about that. Now, having said that, um, uh, the flip side is also true. If you are a person who drinks beer, you drink alcohol, but yet when the child's around you, you don't drink, you certainly don't drive under those conditions, the court's not going to hold it against you. If the other side says, well, I want custody because he drinks, the court's going to tell you right off the bat, it's not a crime to drink, it's not a crime to drink in your home, it's not a crime to get drunk. As long as they can't show that somehow this impacts the child. In other words, you're not drinking, you're not getting drunk around your kid. You're maybe doing that activity once mom has the kid, but you are not involved in exposing the child to that, and the court really should be holding that against you. So when you talk about what activities will or will not be held against you, it's very important to understand the parameters of that. And you should be talking to your lawyer and you should be leveling with them. Say, look, this is what I do. Is this going to be held against me? How can this be explained to the court in a way where it won't be held against me? That's what expert lawyers will help you out with. If you have any questions about that, reach out and we'll be glad to help you out.